God's richest peace and blessings to you today as we gather on this Lord's Day to sing His praises and to once again receive His gifts as we come to the uh, end of our church year or getting closer to the end of our church year. Our theme today is from the first of three parables from Matthew chapter 25. Uh, today, ready and waiting as we anticipate our Lord's gracious return. Uh, we're coming to you from Trinity Lutheran Church in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, if you are used to following our service, obviously we're in a little different uh, venue today. Uh, we had uh, some uh, timing conflicts today, so we had to kind of re rearrange everything. And so this is actually uh, from my uh, study at church today. Uh, so welcome nonetheless. Uh, if you'd like to uh, access all of our resources, our worship resources, and also a copy of today's sermon, plus uh, our devotions that we post every day, uh, you can do so at tlckeen.org, and we certainly welcome you to join us today. So our service, uh, we continue today with our service, um, and on this, um, uh, this uh, closing uh, season, as we get close to the end of the season, I should say, as I mentioned, uh, you'll notice uh, in our services uh, more uh, discussion with regards to the return of our Lord, and that's typical for our church year, uh, as our church year kind of winds down and moves into the Advent season towards the end of the month, uh, our Sundays become uh, a little more urgent in the sense that uh, we wait and anticipate our Lord's uh, gracious return, which happens to be one week sooner uh, than it was last week. So I join, ask you to join us today as we uh, remember our baptism in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Make haste, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. May all who seek the Lord rejoice and be glad in Him. May we say evermore that God is great. For Christ is coming soon. Soon he will descend from the heavens. Soon he will raise the dead, and we will always be with the Lord. He is our help and our deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Indeed, Christ is coming soon to raise the dead and to bring us back to everlasting life with him. And yet there are times when we have lived as if Christ's return were not important or imminent. So our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him and ask for His forgiveness. We join in a time of silent reflection. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have ignored You and our neighbors in need. We have sinned in our thoughts, words, and actions. We have failed by our inactivity. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, O Lord, that we might be encouraged by your presence and forgiven of our sin. Almighty God, in his mercy, hears your confession and has given his one and only Son to die and to rise for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. 
as a fellow redeemed in Jesus and as his called and ordained servant in this place. I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In him we are forgiven as we now look for our Savior's return. Where even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. A day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. For the Lord is our sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. with you and also with you let us pray almighty and everlasting god who made and upholds the heavens and the earth grant that we who abide in these last days may not lose hope but instead keep faith that we may be prepared to greet with joy the one through whom you make all things new jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. So our reading for today, as I mentioned, comes from Matthew chapter 25, where as the Lord drew closer and closer to his crucifixion and resurrection, uh, he became more and more urgent as he communicated uh, the life of the disciple in the light of the last days. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. 
For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In our catechetical reflection this week, we reflect on the third article of the Apostles' Creed, along with the explanation from the small catechism. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Where Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Well, it's a simple, straightforward parable, a betrothal, a planned wedding day procession, something that was not uncommon for the weddings of that day. Except there is one small glitch, and that is the bridegroom, after a time of delay, decides that now is the time. And so he comes to collect his bride. Maybe he just couldn't physically wait any longer. Maybe he sensed a moment of impending danger and felt compelled to collect her post-haste. At any rate, it is time. And the bridegroom arrives in the middle of the night to bring his beloved to begin their new life together. Where the point in question is whether or not the bridal party is ready to join him in the parade. Who is the him? Well, it's Jesus. As sure as we confess each Sunday in the Creed, who has promised to return. Where what we're privy to in our text today is a window into the future. The day the Son of Man makes good on his promise to bring his bride home. Where the maidens in the text, they are us. They are the church on earth, the bride of Christ. They are you. They are me. Given the gift of faith. Where all at one time are within the pale of Christ's church. All ten wearied from their daily toil. Doing what those who do hard work do. They rest from their labors, from their respected callings and their vocations where the foolish virgins are not among those who never acknowledge Jesus as their Lord. They did acknowledge him once, at one time making the same confession 
as the wise. They at one time dwelt in his love. One time they yearned for his coming. But now their faith has grown cold. Whether tested by affliction or choked out by the cares of this world or the love of riches and the pleasures of this life, their love for Christ has faded. Where this world has become more important to them than what the Lord has brought them. They've made foolish decisions about what is valuable in life. They may even still be members of the church by outward association, but their love of the Savior has since grown cold. The time of living in the not yet has become laborsome for them, and so they have stopped watching. No doubt we have all been there, where we've waited and waited and waited. We've waited for this blankety-blank pandemic to turn the corner threatening now even our holidays. We've waited for that $1,200 stimulus check, or perhaps the second one. We've waited for the final results of a presidential race. We've waited on test results from the doctor or for an appointment to even get in to see one. We've waited for the time when we can greet one another again with the handshake or the kiss of peace, to kneel once again as Christ's bride around his holy altar. For what do you long today? For what do you wait? It's something that we probably spend, I would say, roughly a quarter of our lives doing. Waiting for the Amazon orders to come in the mail or to get out of that grocery line or the line at the DMV for our children to be born and to grow and to head out into the world, and if they're millennials, the day for three quarters of them to come back home again. We wait for our promotions. We wait for the daily stock market report. We wait for retirement as we wait for the mail. We understand this, along with how weary it is that we sometimes become to do it. Where if you're like me, we sometimes wait quite carelessly at times, even though we, like the whole of the ten, possess the gift of faith, the oil of faith, where once again the bride of Christ and we as members of her are given the charge to watch and to wait, not passively, but actively to anticipate our Savior's return. So how is that going for you? We cannot forget, says Francis Fernandez, that God is our ultimate end. Everything else is of secondary importance, whether it be success, fame, poverty, wealth, health, sickness. These temporal concerns can be beneficial for us, but only if we keep our lamps burning. Only if our eyes are fixed on the Lord and not become distracted by the things of secondary importance. In other words, that when Jesus finally does return, that we're not caught off guard. We're not surprised. Where it's sort of a small running debate between my bride and myself. She's made it clear that she hates to be surprised. No surprise parties. I tried once. Nothing too far afield. Me, I can take them or leave them. Unless, of course, I'm blindsided by some aspect of ministry that I didn't see coming. And then I don't care for them either. Otherwise, they're no big deal. But we don't want to be surprised on the day of Christ's return. And so how do we avoid that? How do we adequately remain in this state of readiness for our groom's sure and certain return? Wherein, like all of the ten... On the day that the Lord laid claim to us, he gifted us with a full lamp, whereby his grace and his forgiveness, he promises to keep it full. But we must continue to avail ourselves of his gifts, of the means by which he would keep that lamp full. 
to do whatever it is that we are equipped and enabled to do in order to hold on to that confession of Jesus Christ as Lord. How do we do that? Well, by living first and foremost in a state of repentance. Here we take nothing for granted. Unlike Israel, to whom Amos delivered this scathing condemnation, we do not come to rely on our own outward works of keeping up appearances. Here's what Amos said to Israel, I hate and I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Take away from me the noise of your songs, to the melody of your harps. I will not listen, but let justice roll like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream where repentance consists of two parts. First, that we confess our sins, that we acknowledge our failure to watch, that we stand before God, warts and all, to ask God's forgiveness. But then we revel in the joy of hearing that word of forgiveness, that our sins are truly forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, of that name being put on us at our baptism, that our faith is nourished, our lamps are filled with the oil of His grace and faith in a Savior who still loves His own. Wherein secondly, we remain in a state of readiness by immersing ourselves in the words that He gives us. Going back to Fernandez, he says, we do not know how much time is left to correct and improve the manuscript of our book. But let us continue to immerse ourselves in his book, in his good and gracious words, which serve not only to humble us, but there to also assure us of that salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ. To reassure us in our time of waiting and in our times of doubt. To reinforce us in times of weakness. To resurrect us in the hour of our death all the while connecting ourselves also to others by way of this mutual conversation and consolation of the brothers. Yes, do not give up the blessing of that sweet company, of fellowship with one another. I know that it's hard, but even cards and phone calls and emails and FaceTime and Zooms and go to meetings are better than the alternative. To go to whatever lengths we can to encourage one another and all the while to be encouraged. How else? By continuing in works of charity, that most excellent way, what some fathers saw as the light in our lamps, not to gain eternal life, but as works of love that flow forth from that expression of life that reigns in us of God's kingdom come, Longing to hear upon our groom's return, well done, thou good and faithful servant, well done, as we set about with what the Lord has given us to do, to glorify him and to bless others. That as we do these things, we remain ready. Even as Jesus has made us ready. Jesus on the cross, we are ready. Forgiveness in his name, we are ready. Even now, keeping our lamps full by these means, we are ready. Jesus filling them in order to keep us shining brightly in the world, we are ready. Where our lamps burn, our faith is tested, we sin, our oil runs low, but God's grace is greater. Where our lamps are once again full of oil, we are ready to meet the bridegroom, to meet Jesus. We are ready. The waiting waiting, but always and forever ready. To meet him, says one commentator, who is not our mother-in-law, coming to see whether her wedding present china has been chipped, but rather he's the funny old uncle with a salami under one arm and a bottle of wine in the other. We do and need to watch for him because it would be such a pity to miss all the fun. Where in the end, it's not the coming of the bridegroom that makes some wise and some foolish. 
It merely reveals, in the end, who is. C.S. Lewis once said that he who has God and everything else has no more than he who has God only. Wherein as the baptized and redeemed of Jesus and as ones who continue to confess his name, we possess everything we need to meet him. We have the lamps. We have the oil to fill them. They are his gifts to us. We need nothing else. Which also means we need not fear his return. Wherein the promised coming of the bridegroom ultimately is our joy. In love, our Savior empowers us to think on him and to concentrate on him where he opens our hearts. He teaches us to listen to his word and to live in it. And that cross continues to forgive us, to empower us to live in this word. He makes us the wise virgin who lives his word in our thoughts and in our confession and in our conversation and in our good works. And that is the joy of our life in him. So watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Lord, thank you for making us ready, for granting to us and filling our lamps of faith. And now by your grace, O Lord, keep us ready even as we already are ready and waiting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now join together in a time of prayer. And if you have our worship folder, then our prayers are located on page 8 and 9 of the worship folder. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church, the gathering of God's people, that we may support and encourage one another as we await the day of our Lord's return. In mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, our state, our local community, and our neighborhoods. May justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream in our courts and in our centers of government, that we may lead lives that are peaceful and peaceable, In mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve among us as leaders in the church, that they may find support and joy in their service. We pray that many young men and women would be led into the vocations of service in the church, encouraged by our prayers and our gifts. In mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those with special need, for our petitions in these times including the sick and the hospitalized, the shut-in, those facing challenges in employment or in other parts of their lives, that their needs may be met according to God's gracious plan. This day especially do we remember all of those, gracious and heavenly Father, who are in need of our prayers as we continue to lift up to you all of those in our own congregation of our members and friends. Of This week, adding to that list, Diana and Abby and Paula Jen and Lucas, gracious Father, and all others that we continue to pray for. Father, bless them, heal them, strengthen them. In mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, O Lord, that we may be used of all of our gifts that you've given us with thanksgiving, caring for our own bodies, using the talents that we've been given, and seeking to be neighbors and friends that you have designed us to be. In mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we do thank you that you have brought this country through a time of upheaval to some degree, but yet you have centered your power and your will to be done. Lord, help us to accept that and to live that and to continue to pray, not only for our new president, but certainly for all of our leaders, gracious Father. We ask, gracious and heavenly Father, a prayer of thanksgiving as we remember this week all of those that have served in the military, And we commit them to your care, gracious Lord, especially those that are actively serving, separated from their families. Lord, bless and keep them as we remember our veterans, Father. We pray for those that continue to grieve and mourn. We pray this week for our families of the week, of this parish, for the Gunnarsson family, for the Hackeret family, and for the Harkey families. Gracious Father, grant peace and blessing to each of them and to their homes. We pray your blessings on our school. 
We thank you, O Lord, that you continue to have graced us and blessed us with good health. And we just ask that you would renew and strengthen our teachers and George and all those that serve, gracious Lord. We pray for the health and well-being of all of the members and friends and families. As we offer up praises for Katie, whose surgery went well, and for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, for Jessica and Rose and Nicole and Jim and Valerie and Pil Pilar, gracious Father, continue to bless and to keep each of them, to grant peace and blessing to their lives. Even as, again, we pray for the state of our country and for all of the gifts that you give. Where into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The benediction from Jude, verse 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn from Sir Lutheran Service Book, Hymn 800, uh, is a tune entitled Alabare. And uh, um, maybe a little unfamiliar to some, uh, but... Uh, we rejoice to sing that as we anticipate our Lord's uh, gracious return. Alabare, alabare, alabare a mi Señor. Mi Señor, I will praise you, my Lord. Amen. Well, once again, we rejoice and thank you for being with us today uh, for worship. Uh,
you have reached, again, Trinity Lutheran Church in Keene, New Hampshire. And we welcome you to, uh, to join us uh, each week as uh, we will continue to um, record our services. We may be uh, changing the format for that a little bit in the weeks ahead, but we'll uh, keep you posted. Uh, also, again, if you'd like to uh, receive any of our information, uh, sermons, uh, worship folders, uh, daily devotions, uh, you may do that at tlckeen.org. We wish you a blessed week. Take care.